we've got um, Zig here, so uh, and I want to give Zig plenty of time to, to talk about what, what he's got today. So um, as I mentioned at the top of the, of the show, uh, Zig's a huge contributor to the AppScript community, and particularly with what he does on, on Stack Overflow. Um, but it's not just AppScript with Zig. He, he's very familiar with a range of products and platforms. Uh, and we thought we'd um, get Zig along and talk about some of the, the recent work he's been doing in this area. So, Zig, tell us more about what you've been up to recently. Uh, sure. Uh, first, you hear me OK, fine? Yeah. All right. Um, well, I've been looking at Google Cloud Functions. And the primary reason I looked at it was, uh, well, first, I know JavaScript pretty well. Uh, I learned it with App Script, and uh, it was natural. Like the natural next step was to look at something that sometimes can be a little bit more powerful than App Script, but it uses the same language. So it was pretty easy to pick it up, and and uh, I needed to do it in my case for a backend for Stripe. Stripe.com is a payment uh, handler and I needed to charge for a service, so I ended up doing it with Cloud Functions. So I'm gonna present a representation here on the screen. So with this uh, link is really the way for you to get started. I'm gonna share this, uh, the URL of the presentation itself as well at the end. Uh, Basically, it uses node.js, which is a whole a different topic uh, to talk about. I will not talk much about node. Uh, but the great thing is that it uses JavaScript. And that was good enough for me to, to start learning it. Here is why you would want to use it. Uh, this is my top five, but you can probably find uh, more reasons. The first one is, well, handling a request. Just like in AppScript, you can have a, a do get or do post. You can also do this in uh, Cloud Functions and have an own request, uh, which can have a handle post, get, and I don't know, any REST uh, call, any HTTP or HTTPS call. Uh, one great thing about Cloud Functions is that you can map them to a custom domain, um, and you'll see why that's great uh, in point four later. So number two, uh, respond to events. And this is also something great that well, AppScript doesn't have a built-in, really. Uh, the, the A, the first one, is events about the database. And uh, this is also a big topic that very interesting that you should look at if you haven't looked into Firebase database. It's a real-time database. And uh, for example, whenever you or anybody or another app adds a node into your database, you can say, hey, call this function in my, in my cloud function. So you can react when a node is added or change it or whatever. And not was not just by you, of course, but by anybody outside of your app. Uh, the second uh, trigger you can handle is authentication. That's also built into Firebase. You can have a login with multiple providers, including custom name and password. And so you can have a trigger. So whenever a new user signs up, maybe you want to send them an email saying hi. And um, the third one is for analytics. These are the new Firebase analytic events. And also, you can they are better in some ways to Google Analytics because they happen real time and without aggregation of the totals. Uh, and you can react also real time with a trigger from an analytic uh, call. The fourth, one, the fourth one is uh, cloud storage. Like if you or somebody else uh, puts a file on a folder, uh, you can have your call function get called. And also for the last one, PubSub. Yeah, also a great thing to, to look into if you haven't looked into it. It's like a way to store. Uh, it's like a queue where you can put stuff without having to react instantly. And then you can put uh, pull things from it. Uh, 
And also, whenever a message arrives to the pub sub, you can get a call into your call function, so you react. Uh, so uh, besides push events, you can also uh, register a webhook, which is the reason I did it for Stripe. So uh, for example, when a customer uh, charge a fails when Stripe fails to charge uh, a credit card, then it calls a webhook into my call function, and so I can email the user and say, "Hey, your credit card is not letting me charge you." Something like that. And um, the fourth one is, is is really a great one. I should be uh, at the very top. Uh, it's uh, you can come back. You can make a backend for a frontend app. So Firebase also has Firebase hosting, which runs on top of Google Cloud Storage. And so you can have your, your front-end app stored there, like a HTML, CSS, JS app. Uh, but the backend can be in Cloud Functions. And because, of, because you can assign custom domains, uh, you can avoid problems of uh, cross-domain requests and such, because then your Firebase hosting app is on the same domain as your Cloud Functions backend, and it's just a regular full-fledged uh, app, web app. Uh, the fifth one is just a, is one more recent, really. Uh, in my company, we tend to make a, a Google Cloud Platform scripts for launching instances or doing batch operations, and we used to put them in Linux uh, scripts, shell scripts, with GSU2, for example. But it turns out that sometimes it's much more practical to have it in a cloud function. And then, uh, you know, it's auto scales, uh, etc., which is what we'll see next. On the next slide, this is really the reason I wanted to give this talk, which is uh, to compare it with other existing platforms. Mostly, I looked into App Engine because that's what I was using in my company for big auto scaling systems. And it turns out that many of them can be done in Cloud Functions, sometimes easier. Uh, so, here's a comparison at the top of the just like a raw potency that you can get on a single instance, of course. Uh, right now in Cloud Functions, you can choose five potencies. You can see there the ranges of CPU and RAM, you know, from 128 megabytes to two gigabytes of RAM. So that's pretty good. Uh, about concurrent requests, which is really the the meat of this, is uh, that you can you know automat you can call concurrently your Cloud Function, and Google automatically takes care of the auto scaler. Uh, that's something that we sometimes suffer in AppScript because we have time limits uh, per function and, and per day and per concurrency as well. Uh, and this one is more, well, it's bigger. Uh, 400 concurrent requests is really a lot, uh, unless you need something really, really huge. Uh, App Engine can do more, but not really because. Uh, if you see here my, my calculation, this is uh, 1,600 concurrent calls. But that, recalls, that requires some tweaking in App Engine. For example, uh, there is a variable in App Engine called max concurrent requests, which is how many requests a single instance can have. And you can put it all the way to 80 instead of 8, which means a single instance can have uh, 80 threads created on it. And that means your threads will end up sharing memory and such. So it's not, you know, yeah, you can scale it to 1600, but each node will be the power RAM specifically. So in Cloud Functions, not so, right? Each, each of the 400 has its own uh, instance guaranteed with the power that you specified uh, when you chose your, your potency. Uh, up, up to now, uh, some comments or questions that you guys have? I'm, I'm just wondering, have you, um, in, in your experiences so far, hit into the limits of with Cloud Functions and, and the, I think it was 400 concurrent? 
if I have okay. reached them? Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, well, in the in the case that I've implemented the cloud function, it's for handling licenses. So mm -hmm. I would love to have 400 people <laughs> try to purchase my app concurrently, <laughs> but that doesn't happen. Uh, and um, in, in my case, it's really more than enough for 100. Uh, and, and it's in beta cloud functions. I should have started by that. So maybe they will make it more powerful mm -hmm. later. Um, but uh, it's concurrent. You have to take that into account. I mean, mm -hmm. your request can take only 50 milliseconds maybe to, to, to finish. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to have so many concurrent requests built up unless your function is uh, taking a long time to finish. So, uh, yeah, Zig, I've got a question. Um, one of the things about the App Engine is that if you're using the Flexible instance, which you will need to if you're using Node, um, there isn't a free tier. Uh, so in other words, you, you, you're paying right away, and you're, you're uh -huh. paying not for usage, but you're paying for existence. So uh -huh. it, it can be quite expensive. So if you had 20 instances, that would be like super expensive. But on the cloud function, you've got a certain, some some like, I don't know, 2 million calls or something that are free in a month, haven't you? What's, what's the, do you know what the number is? I don't know the number uh, by memory, but yeah. I looked at it and it was huge for my case. Yeah. For my usage, it does have a, a like. I have my app for a few months already online, and with many thousands thousands of users, uh, the the cloud function is not only used for licenses; it's only it's also used for other things. So many users are using it every day, like every second. I go in there, and people are calling the functions, and so far I haven't been charged. Ah, okay, that's good. As I say, I mean, uh, app engine can cost you. Um, you know, 50, 60 buck, bucks a month and you don't really do anything with it. So yeah, it's, no, a, I, it's a, yeah, I it's haven't a, paid a penny. And I'm using storage, functions, triggers, uh, yeah. many things, a database, database too. Uh, yeah. But that's what well, you mentioned is inflexible because in the engine standard, you have also a very lax quotas. Yeah, that's right. And, and, and if you're using uh, Java or Python or something like that, then mm -hmm. You know, you, you get loads of stuff for free, but for some reason they haven't done that in the flex environment. Yeah, I mean, that's because they haven't. Eventually, I think App Engine will become just flexible, and then everything will have maybe the quota will go away. But but they can't. It's a language thing. The the platform they have only works on on uh, Python and Java. Well, I'm, I'll go. Uh, what else here? Uh, well, yeah, it's important what I say, right? It's in, it, the, the, put the right weight for your needs because you cannot just say 1600 is bigger than 400. So App Engine is better because in the App Engine case, you, have, you are sharing RAM across many threads if you really push it to that limit. So in reality, App Engine is more like with a standard limit of eight threads instead of 80. You have to divide by 10, the 6300, so you end up with 160 concurrent calls if you don't tweak uh, that. So that's less than 400. So it's, you know, it's hard to say which is better, uh, but both, are, both handle very well the concurrent requests. And also the, the response times, uh, which is also something that uh, can help you uh, compared to AppScript. In AppScript, you have Sometimes five minutes, sometimes six minutes. Uh, I'm not sure which is which. I think is six minutes now uh, maximum time uh, for a single call. While in cloud functions, you get nine minutes, and it's really great nine minutes, especially compared to App Engine, which gives you one minute. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes one minute, many times is not enough, and you have to play many tricks with. No, you complicate things in App Engine if you need more time. So that time for that cloud function is great, and uh, also in App in, in there's also response times for uh, doing like a fetch, like in App Script also. You're like there's a so much time that Google will wait for a fetch, and in App Engine too, and not so with cloud functions. You have more control with that. 
Uh, the next thing I have is a little screenshot of what you get from Firebase. Uh, it's important to note that if you're starting on Cloud Functions, there's two ways to start. You can look at the Cloud Functions documentations from Google, or you can go uh, for uh, to firebase.google.com and look at it from there. And in Firebase, it's much better. It's integrated into their database and, and their triggers. And you can do more from there than from the Google Cloud uh, Platform documentation. So here you see uh, that there's a functions tab on the left, and uh, it shows you the functions that you have launched. And it also has the next panel. Yeah, really at the top you see the, it's in Spanish, sorry, but it's control panel and then uh, your logs, which it says registros here. Logs is uh, automatic logs, like whenever the function is called, but also if you do console.log and put whatever there, it ends up in this log. And this is really great because you can connect it with Stack Driver and do something like whenever a log with level error uh, or it contains such and such string, uh, email me and check it every minute. And so right, so so I if if I put errors in my console, uh, I don't have to do anything special. I just get an email whenever something weird happens, and it has helped me a lot to uh, debug things and to catch things very quickly before the user notices if there's a bug, for example. So that's what I have for for uh, Cloud Functions. Uh, we can really talk a lot more about it, but I think it goes a little bit uh, off the, the topic. Uh, if you have uh, questions or comments, I'll be happy to answer them. Hi, this is Rudy in Dallas. I was just wondering, what was that difference in the two links of accessing Firebase? Uh, be between, let's see. Accessing it on Google Cloud versus yes. accessing it directly. Oh, there it is. Yes, this link, uh, firebase.google.com, uh, get started, is the one that I recommend. Uh, because if you go, with the, let's go to it. At first, it's really, it's really well done, ex the explanation of the steps to install a node and everything. Uh, I really didn't know anything about node. And, this page was all I needed to get started. Within cool. maybe two minutes, you can have, well, maybe five minutes, you can have a Cloud Function deployed and working if you start from zero from this page. Uh, there is also a, um, if you just Google it, you, what you get is this. And this is more confusing. It's like the standard format of Google documentation, but like you can hear, and, and it's not that easy to get started, really. I mean, it has quick starts. Uh, it has maybe some advantages, which I haven't tried yet. Uh, in particular, there is a host code hosting in Google, and I think you can host the code and run it directly as a cloud function if you deploy it from this console. Like there is a Google console and the Firebase console. And once you deploy it on one, you can't switch to the other. Okay, So that's why it's important to start on the right one. I think it's easier to start on the Firebase one and it's more integrated with what I needed. But there might be advantages to the Google console, which I haven't identified yet. And I think I suspect that the code hosting is one advantage that Firebase doesn't have. So we, we covered um, Google Cloud Functions last week. They are a little slightly different than than, than Firebase ones. And you're right, for, Firebase is a lot easier to get started with. Um, on the Google Cloud Function, you've got an entire GitHub type of an environment that you can use to yes. manage and post code. Uh, yeah, that's what I was uh, suspecting too, right, that you have yeah. the code hosting. And, and once you host it there, you can just uh, deploy it from within there directly, I suppose. Yeah, and not only that, you can also integrate it with the public GitHub if you want, so that if you make a change in your public source code, it automatically refreshes back into the 
hosting environment within Google Cloud. Okay, yeah, that's a really great uh, advantage. And if you need that, uh, you won't get it if you install it from Firebase. In Firebase, it's more like using command line tools to deploy. Like you say, Firebase, deploy, and your, the folder, like, uh, let's say, like really, if you see my desktop, I have a, this is it, right? I have a folder called functions, and in there I have an index. Uh, and then if I go into my command prompt and uh, from this, uh, from this uh, directory and say Firebase deploy, then it just uh, puts the code in Firebase. So it's easy to work with, but I guess it's easier if you integrate it with uh, code hosting directly. The, Thank you. The, other, the other thing that you get on the Google Cloud Function side is a, you have a, a built-in virtual machine that you can use for playing around with and before you send your code up to, um, to be a Cloud Function. And you've also got a, an, a simulator so you can run it locally, well, sort of locally, um, without having to deploy it. I don't know if you've got that in Firebase as well. Yes, in Firebase, you also have a simulator. OK, yeah. Okay. But I, I haven't used the simulator because what I do in Firebase, and especially because it's the free tires, is you create a separate project uh, for like your beta or your test project, but yeah. completely with a different console and everything, yeah. and deploy there and test there. Because at the end, you have to also call uh, third-party functions. And when it's hosted locally, sometimes you can't. Uh, so I just don't bother with hosting locally and, and yeah. use a separate console. It's, it's actually not local. It's running on a virtual machine. But it's, but it's sort of local. Ah, because the Firebase one does make a server on your machine and runs it there. OK. Well, if you um, want to find out more about games, start with um, Firebase Functions. Um, the uh, session we did last month with Real, uh, we've got it turned into a tutorial as well. So it does the whole step by step um, setup that you need for that. So um, uh, you can get started with there. Um, was there anything else you wanted to add, Zig? Uh, that's it. <laughs>